do you think we've gone a little bit too far? Well, you and I are both tech guys. I love tech. But I think some tech has gone a little bit too far. Like I, I think maybe like the when like the original iPhones were, were enough, like some of like the, like the smart like smart TVs, like some of the stuff that's going. I think it's it's just for a waste. I think all the digital assistants have gone too far now. Like yeah. I have I have Alexa and Google like in all my appliances now, like my TV, my I don't alarm trust those clock. Things. So like sometimes I'll just be talking and out of nowhere you hear. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm like, well, wait, I wasn't talking to you. Like, why are you listening to me right now? Yeah, it's creepy. Why do you have that? Yeah. Why? Uh, <laughs> why? Honestly, that? because it's <laughs> nowadays everything's so connected where I'm just, you know, like, no, no, what's no, the weather? No, there's no fucking excuse for it. What's the weather? <laughs> you go on your fucking YouTube and you Google five day weather. <laughs> I know. Or, That's or, horrible. or, or That's my, really I have bad. my security cameras. So That's like, really if, if something goes off, I'd be like, you know, show me my security. My TV will just flip onto my security camera, you know? Yeah, so, no, no. Get that thing out of the house. <laughs> Elsa, what's her name? Alexa, Alexa, and Alexa, then I have yeah, Google man. also. They're, they're both of them. Yeah, no, you, your whole life is being, your whole life is being fucking listened to and invaded, and you know you're you're a communist. You live in a communist environment. If you really think about it, you're supporting a communist environment for being what? For being a yuppie. No, I, it's being more a just millennial. Was that what it means? That it's more like music and stuff. <clears throat> just so I, I can know, listen I, to. I music. think about me growing up and my stepdad getting out of jail in 1969 and never going back again till he died in 2006. And he was still a bookmaker and he learned lessons, but he wouldn't even let me talk to, to next to a phone that was hung up. Do you understand me? That was a paranoia he had, and he was right. He was right, you know, and now you look at these computers, they're watching you when you're jerking off, and you're about to put a butt plug up your ass. They got you. Yeah. yeah. Who's watching you? Who knows? But why give them more what they already know? Listen, your credit card's in the computer file. Guess what? One day it's going to come up with a Ukrainian, and you bought a blender in the Ukraine. That's just the way life is. Do you see those rain cameras getting hacked now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they can talk to you like they're just talking yeah, to you. Yeah, you, you, Jesus. You have no security whatsoever anymore. So I don't add to that millennial image or whatever. I avoid that stuff. I don't want somebody in my house taping. You don't know who the fuck is listening. If anybody's listening at all, maybe there's no reason for a paranoia. <clears throat> but you have to assume they're listening. It's like when you walk into a hotel room in Vegas, you have to assume... There's somebody in that room watching you jerk off and stick a finger up your ass and smell your fingers. Do you think? Do you think it's in Vegas? I know for a fact. Yeah. I know for a fact it's drilled into my psyche. Especially after the shooting. I know for a fact that in 1983, a buddy of mine went to Vegas and walked into a bathroom stall, closed the door behind him, did a line of coke in the stall, real quiet. He was a cop. Walked out of the store, washed his hands, and when he walked out, two cops were waiting for him. They knew he had done cocaine. Wow. There was cameras in the ceiling. Wow. I know that a year or so after that, a girl I went to high school with and very dear friends with went to Vegas for her honeymoon. And for her five-year anniversary, she turned the TV on at the Poconos, and they ordered porn, and it was them on their, on their wedding night. No shit. She sued the hotel for like $3 million wow. back in 1988 or 89. So if I'm telling you this is what was going on 30 years ago, what do you think is going on today? You have to assume when you go to Vegas, they're watching you fuck that chick. Yeah. They're watching you fuck that hooker. They're watching you. They got you down. They have those scanners you could buy now. Like uh, that will show you if there's any hidden cameras or microphones. It's like uh, radioactive. Yeah, or, no, ra well, not radioactive. It's electrical. It's yeah. an electrical thing. Yeah. But you, the asshole that you are, <laughs> not you, Red right, Man. Right. I'm talking about you, the asshole being Me, Joe yeah. American. It's like when I don't know if you know this. Like right now, technology is really weird. You know how they busted the Gambino crime family? They had a snitch that told them that Paul Castellano spoke mainly in the kitchen and there was a TV in the kitchen where they wouldn't 
where they would be, they would watch when they were in the kitchen before people would come over and then they go turn the TV off. What they did was they knew that there was a TV, so the feds actually de scrambled the TV. And they're sitting there hitting it and they're moving the antenna and they got cable. This is Paul Castellano's house in Staten Island. It's a $4 million house in 1980. What do you think it's worth today? It's a mansion. And the fucking cable don't work. But the other rooms, all the TVs worked. So they called the fucking TV repairman. Only it was an FBI guy that picked up the phone. Mm -hmm. They went in this house and they put bugs in. Now, this is how dumb they were. When they had the bugs in the TV, they would. They knew what time. They would say, it. oh, Paul Lee, everything's taken care of with the sweeper. He's coming around 3 o'clock today. No problem. At 3 o'clock, they shut off the bugs. And they and the sweeper can't pick up the electric fre wow. frequency. <laughs> so once the guy would leave, they would turn the bugs back on again. The feds installed the bugs while Hilarious. Paul Castellano and Tommy Bellotti were in the room, into the TV. And Tommy Bellotti's like, Hurry up with that thing, fucko. <laughs> you know, and you're like, yeah, sure. He doesn't know that you're installing a fucking bug that's going to go down to fucking uh, Virginia. They're going to be listening to every conversation in this fucking room. That's how they do a bug. Then they had, they were, they were bugging you with parabolic microphones. You know the microphones the NFL uses? Right. Mm -hmm. They'll go two blocks away, turn on a frequency, and bounce it off that glass. And right now we're in here talking about killing somebody and they're listening to us through that fucking glass without a wire, without anything. That was 30 years ago. What the fuck do you think they're doing today? They just turn on the phone. Yeah, they just turn on phones, turn on cameras. Everything, everything. I don't. That's why I put the phone in the office at night. I put the phone in the office so they don't hear what my family chatter is. They don't have to hear if my family chatters. I tell my wife to put hers on the charger in her office. We're phone free in the fucking house. And it's not paranoia. It's just, you know they're listening to you and watching you. How much are you going to let them? How much information are you going to give them about yourself online? Every time you sign up for another stupid website, do you really need them to send you peanut butter online? <laughs> do you really need peanut butter? You got Trader Joe's down the corner, <laughs> but you want a special peanut butter. <laughs> now you have to tell them, like, what's your... Give me three things from your uh, life so they can ask you. Your first dog, Fifi. Your first girlfriend's name, Amelia. Now they know everything. Yeah, They I saw put it. it together with all that shit. You know, so the more things you sign up for, and you're like, eh, look at me, Periscope. <laughs> <laughs> the more shit you open up, the more shit they got on you. I'm, and I'm not talking, I don't sell drugs. I don't, I don't, I don't do dick. You can listen to my phone lines all you want. You're going to hear the most boring conversation. Mm -hmm. You're going to hear a conversation me and my 50-year-old friends complaining about how tired we are and how many espressos we got to drink a day. And you hear me and Tripoli or me and you or me and you. That's it. Mm -hmm. There's no, I don't even, I don't even have women that I talk to that I like, like whack off to. You can listen to me all day. It's the most boring and shit in the world. But I think your house, no. And they've told you 15 times. Alexa goes right to the fucking governor's house. And he's listening. To governor's Every house. time you fuck that little Chinese girl, he masturbates to you. That camera that you think you're watching the door with, they're watching you when you got a doggy style. Making porn. Fucking them talk, calling Trump over Trump. Look at Red Band. Look at Red Band over there and fucking that little Chinese girl. Man, she, she's Korean, all right? I would never Korean fuck Chinese, a Chinese girl. Especially not well, well, listen, wall, wall hand is all over. Like I said yesterday. Those Asian people, they ate a dog, they ate a bat, and that's how this fucking thing started. <laughs> and when I say Asian, so not, nobody gets offended. Mm -hmm. That's how you ever go to Chinatown, the shit that hangs from the windows. There's animals, you don't animals. even know what the fuck are. <laughs> yeah. And go to China, that's where you see the real good shit. And you're like, how the fuck do they eat chicken's feet? The, the hard-ons. They'll eat anything for a hard-on, Chinese people. <laughs> if you tell them a piece of shit on bread will get your dick harder. You'll see Chinese people eating dick on bread. That's what they do. They, there's a soup that's made out of bull's balls. Mm. That's like $2,000. Jesus. 
it's that it, that's what, one night it gives you it puts your dick like in magical places. You go to the restaurant, Rhino. You see a bunch of fucking Chinese people praying, and a bunch of old people drinking the soup, looking at their old wives. Like I'm like, give it to you tonight. You know, it's fucking not. Who the fuck knows? I don't even know anymore. I'm just happy to be doing what I'm doing. It's all end soon. Who the fuck knows? <laughs>